and welcome back. As we continue to celebrate FND Awareness Month, I ask you, are you FND aware? Well, you're watching this video, so you're on your way. Now it's time to spread awareness. An easy way to do that is by participating in the FND Aware Challenge. All you have to do is download this sign from FND Hope and post a picture of yourself with the sign. To do that, go to fndhope.org, hover over How to Help, and click on World's FND Month. Scroll down to the section titled Be FND Aware and follow the instructions from there. Don't forget to use the hashtags FND Aware, Let's Talk FND, and FND 2020. Now, on to your questions. Is having serious trauma or stress a prerequisite for FND? No. I think about it like this. Anyone can get lung cancer, but you're more likely to get it if you are or were a smoker. My understanding is that the correlation between FND and trauma or stress is similar. If someone has trauma or high levels of stress, their chances of FND presenting are higher. But FND can present in people without any trauma or stress. Physical triggers, injury, or other psychological stress have been suggested as possible risk factors. Can both psychological and physical trauma trigger FND? Yes, as I just said, psychological trauma is not a box that has to be checked off in order for someone to get FND. And the same is true with physical trauma. But many people's symptoms present after mental or physical trauma, and their trauma seems to be the trigger that gives them FND. If nothing shows up on brain imaging, does that mean you're fine? No. One of the hardest things about FND is the lack of understanding in the medical community. Most doctors don't know what FND is. They may have heard of it, but they still believe it to simply be the conversion of mental stress into physical symptoms. With FND, typical tests such as brain MRIs or CT scans don't show something as obvious as a tumor, and many doctors stop there. FND does not show up on these types of brain imaging, but that does not mean that it's not real. Is there a place for SPECT imaging to diagnose or treat FND? I had never heard about SPECT imaging before this question was submitted. So I reached out to Bridget, the founder and director of FND Hope, to help me answer it. After speaking with her, I learned that the SPECT scan is a type of nuclear imaging test, so patients are exposed to radioactive material. This makes it difficult to get IRB research approval. As of right now, there are no scans available to diagnose FND. That sums up what is FND. If you missed part one, you can find it on CourageousUs.com. For more information about FND, check out fndhope.org and neurosymptoms.org and follow my story on CourageousUs.com. Be sure to tune in for the next video where I answer questions about living with FND. Bye!